Welcome everyone to the Unfiltered with Car Jones Unlimited LLC podcast. Today, Sunday, what is it, March 21st, the second day of spring. I am so very excited to have my featured guests with me all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. How are you, sir? I am fantastic. A little tired um, because I just painted a mural earlier, but um, I'm fantastic. Okay. Now, I want you to, if you will, be so kind and pronounce mm -hmm. your name so that I don't mess it up again. Alois McElwain. 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 Okay. So I've been putting an extra L in it. I don't know where I saw that, but that's what I've been doing. I do apologize. But just, I, I know, I know you who know, you are. We know you by your beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me see something here because, yeah, hold on a minute here. I'm going to do that. Get rid of that because I hear us talking. Let me turn off my sound over here. Right that. How are you? Hey, how are yeah, you? There it is. Yeah, good. Can you sit up a little bit more? Turn your screen back up. Yeah, let me um, I'll put some pillows under my butt. Hold on. <laughs> that was really okay, yeah, 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 I, I just want to turn off my sound on my screen so that it does not do this. Okay. All right. Okay. So we are live and we are broadcasting from Houston via Philadelphia. And I just wanted everyone. Oh, there it goes. Hold on. I got to fix that. Oh, geez. Technology for you. Let's see here. Ah, otherwise, okay. Hopefully, we'll hear it anymore. Okay. I wanted everyone to know how I met you. Mm -hmm. We're going to start over because I want to get this right. I'll have to edit this, okay? But we are live. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered with Cara Jones Unlimited LLC podcast. I am Chandra, your host, producer, and digital content creator. I'm so excited the second day of spring, March 21st, to have my distinguished feature guest with me all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, by the name of Eloias Milkway. Did I get that right, sir? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew I was going to be able to do it right. So tell me what it is. Tell the viewers. Tell the listeners. It's uh, Eloias McElwain. Eloias McElwain. So you mm -hmm. do accept my apology. No, yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, but it's a very interesting name. Might I ask you, where did your parents come up with that name from? Where did it come so, from? So my mom says that it means gift from God, but I, I'm pretty sure my dad found the name in a, um, in a name book. Um, and that's all that I know from him because neither one of them can really remember. But my mom says that my dad found the name. My mom says it means gift from God. And my dad remembers that he found it in a book, but that's, <laughs> that's all you remember. Okay. Well, it's a very different name. Um, I don't think um, I've ever seen it before, either one of them, your first or last name. And I don't know if I'll see them again unless you have a junior on the way. You know what's funny? Um, I think I am the only Alois on the, uh, the planet, as far as I know. <laughs> that, that makes it good uh, because it makes it good in um, internet searches. My uh, search engine optimization is great because anytime anyone types in the name, I'm the only thing that pops up. So Absolutely. Your SEO is like there, right? <laughs> on point, yeah. on target. So you can't, you couldn't, you know, ask for anything more than that on the internet. That is true. So I wanted everyone to know, sir, how I came about you. Did you ever wonder how I came about you? Because you don't I always wonder that, yeah. Zillions of people on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I would like so, to hear that story. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, I've had um, this performing arts company now since 2016. We're going on year five. And um, wow, year five, that's unbelievable. But um, I try to feature different aspects of the performing arts through my lens. I'm a San Francisco, California native. 
and I've lived in a lot of different cities and states across the country. And so I've seen the performing arts um, as presented by different regions and different mm -hmm. cultures. And so when I started this company back in 2016, I was in central Alabama outside of the capital city of Montgomery. And um, the arts that I saw there were presented a little bit differently than what I was accustomed to, especially the music, music. And music is a big thing for me because I am a musician, but I love the performing arts. And so I decided um, at the end of last year that in 2021, I would feature for the most part art, paint art, drawing art, digital art. And so you actually are my second guest on the Umbrella podcast. Um, and so another thing that I wanted to do that I have not done, I've traveled to what, six different cities with my performing arts company mm -hmm. presenting different productions. But one place I've yet to go where I have lived is the East Coast, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, I intend to get to New York, DC, Virginia, places where I've lived. But another place I want to come to is where you are, mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Philly's a great brotherly music. love. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing so, music city. As I was doing market research last year, I found you last year. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, last year. Um, I came across your page in a search on Instagram. I said, Philadelphia artists, and boom. You were at the top of my list. That's that's the the funny thing. Like I have, it's it's so great. I, I've had so many companies like Netflix and and Miller Lite and all these other big companies that literally slide into my DMs on Instagram because I'm one of the first things that pops up when you type in Philly artists. It's it's such a cool thing. <laughs> so you know I'm telling the truth. I'm not mm -hmm. making this up, mm -hmm. right? And you know I said okay, well let me see who this is. You know of course I looked at that name like okay this name is very different. Mm -hmm. You know so. That piqued my interest even further. And when I went to your page, I was just blown away. Oh, thank blown you. Blown away. I appreciate that. Really blown away. And I wanted to share my screen because I want um, the people who are viewing to be able to see some of your beautiful artwork. Okay? Sounds good to me. Let me see here. Bear with me. Share screen. And I want to share, where is it? I don't know, let me pull it up, hold on. I have it here. There, I wanna go here, like that. All these likes are coming in from my promotion awesome. that I did for you. They just, so we don't see them popping up. Okay, so we'll go share. And, while I'm doing this, why don't you tell um, me and the audience, if you will, how you got started drawing and painting? Well, that's actually uh, kind of a funny story because I've been uh, drawing and painting since uh, I was I was little. It threw me off for a second because the screen shifted. I was like, oh, what happened? Right, right, right. <laughs> I thought I lost you, but it's just a screen share. Um, no, I've been drawing and painting since I was uh, little, and it was one of those things where I was always a really like hyper kid. So my mom used to sit me down and uh, have me draw um, her my favorite comic book characters, just so that she would have a time out from chasing me around. <laughs> so wow! Eventually, like I, I learned how to draw by copying comic books, and then you know, eventually, my love for art just kind of grew from there because it just um, I'm one of those people that literally, from the time that I wake up in the morning to the time that I pass out. I literally just, my brain's just flooded with ideas, all kinds of ideas and all kinds of different spectrums. So art gave me a way to like channel all of that creativity into one place. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically how it got started. I, I was copying comic books and then um, it kind of went from being something that was more of a hobby. It was what I wanted to do for a living, but um, before a certain point, there was this um, stigma kind of that artists starve. And so that, oh, this isn't something that you're gonna be able to do to like, uh, actually pay your bills and everything. But that was before Banksy and Shepard Ferry and, and Cause and some of these other guys um, made street art commercially successful. And then once that happened, like the floodgates just kind of opened up for everything. 
but uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of how it came about. So I've always done art, but um, I think it's transitioned into like the last eight years or when I really started doing this as a business, like this is what I'm doing full time, just wow. doing art, nothing else, painting all day, <laughs> you know? Okay. That's interesting because I was going to ask you the question. So you've already answered one of my questions. Are you a full time artist? Full and time. You are. Full time. Yeah, I do. So I'm either doing uh, murals or I'm also uh, showcasing in three galleries right now. I'm showcasing in Morton Contemporary and um, Corridor Contemporary in um, Philadelphia and Soha Arts um, right over the bridge in, in Jersey. That's actually run by, um, by Steve Carell's niece, Sam, one of my really good friends. Awesome. So, you know, when I came upon your Instagram page that I'm showing here and mm -hmm. I put my um zoom screen in the middle so that i don't look around like this mm -hmm. i noticed that a lot of the artwork that you paint um is of people yeah and so Absolutely. i read many of the captions okay and i realized that these are people that you know yep the large majority of them i know yeah they're friends Okay, so like this one here, I'll just pop on here and move this over. That's my friend Zaina. Okay, I'm hoping it's going to come up. There we go. Okay, so who is this? Tell me about this piece. That's my friend uh, Zaina, and I, I've actually known her for probably about 12, 13, 14 years, something around that time. Um, um, when I was first starting my clothing line, she was one of the first models that I did like a professional photo shoot with okay. so I've known her for a long time. And when I'm, um, I might be getting ahead of myself, but I'm putting. Uh oh, looks like your internet slowed down. So I did a new piece. Okay, your internet froze for a minute, so we didn't hear that last sentence. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it, it's the thing about technology these days. <laughs> right. Trust yeah. me, I understand, because usually it's me that freezes. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so basically, she uh, modeled for me uh, back in the day when I was um, doing stuff for my clothing line. It was like the first professional photo shoot that I did for my clothing line back in the day. Okay. And so because she wrote for me back in the day, I was like, I have to make sure she's well represented in the book when I put the book out. Book? What book are we speaking of here? Oh, oh I might be getting ahead of myself a little no, bit. No, no, let's just um, go with the flow. It's actually, all good. Actually mention it in this post because I'm, I'm putting out my first coffee table book called Muses Volume 1, yes. um, which is a collection of all the women that I've captured in some form of, of another, whether it's uh, murals or canvas paintings or photography or digital art, or I have this entire section of the book that's just beautiful women in posing in front of my artwork and half of the people I know and half of the people I've never met in my life. So it's like so interesting just to see all these people that are taking in and enjoying my art. So I wanted to collect all of these beautiful, colorful images of women um, and just put it together in one book. Wow. So when is the book um, going to be published? So it should be uh, coming out um, late next month, early May. It's, it's just, just one of those things where I know I'm, I'm sending it to the printer on um, like mid-April, like April 14th, but I'm not sure exactly when the printing is going to be done based on how many um, books that I'm getting done. So it's, it's going to be either coming the last week in April or the first week in May, but that right in that time frame. Oh, wow. So this is perfect timing for this interview. Absolutely. So you can just kind of give a little um, editorial debut on my show. Mm hmm Basically. <laughs> Yay. So you didn't even tell me that when I extended the invitation. I, you know, I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off for like the last probably three months. It's been the busiest three months of my entire life like in a good way like all these awesome projects that I'm working on but like I've just been a little overwhelmed because everything it's like you know it's one thing if, if projects are staggered a little bit when everyone has due dates at the same time it's just like ah <laughs> you right. know, I have to get all this stuff done <laughs> I was trying to bring up this one here this porta potty oh <laughs> let's see if it's gonna come up I just clicked on it again 
tell me the story cousin. behind the porta potty mural. I did that for my cousin Big Scott. He's actually like a a promoter and stuff over in Jersey. He Big Scott is one of those guys that knows literally everyone. Like he's friends with Will Smith and like he he literally knows everyone. Like everyone who's done anything in the the tri-state area, he knows them. So um he uh, has people over his house sometimes for like meetings and, and everything. And he had this porta potty um, that he put in the backyard because of the pandemic. And, you know, he um, didn't want everybody coming into the house with germs and stuff. So um, he was like, this porta potty is ugly though. So I need you to come over and do something to it. Cause I'm, I'm rocking my Luke Cage shirt underneath my suit jacket too, <laughs> if you can see that. <laughs> so now the porta potty, you know, normally we see porta potty at construction sites or outdoor public mm -hmm. events. What was the case here? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he so he calls a lot of people over to his house for meetings, oh. but just because of the pandemic, pandemic, he wasn't letting everybody actually in the house. Got so it. That's it. So he wanted to, you know. That was smart of him. Yeah. He's, he's I give you star. 10 points, Dick Scott. That's the way you do it, you know, mm -hmm. because I was telling um, some friends not that long ago that you know, they wanted to come over. I said, you can't come over. And one came anyway, but I said, you're going to have to, you know, sit in the, in the backyard on the patio with me. It was a warm evening, thank God, you know. And when they had to use the restroom, I was like, it ain't going to happen in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't go in the house, you know. Yeah. The pandemic. Yeah. My sweet mom is here and I don't want her exposed, you know. She's 78 years old. Absolutely. Now this other I'm one. I'm taking care of my grandma right now, too. So, like, I definitely understand that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they are more susceptible to germs and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know, being um, elders, you mm -hmm. know, so we have to protect them. I was trying to bring up that mural there, but this one here is another one of my favorites. Oh, thank you. I was actually in this location today. That's where I was painting a mural earlier. Which so, one? Um, uh, so um, this, this location where this mural is, is at a place in, wait, wait. Oh, you know what? You clicked on, um, you clicked on one, and then now this is actually a, a cover that I did for uh, Bella Magazine. Ah. And so it had Tyson Beckford on the front cover and my art on the back cover, which was awesome. Whoa! I love this piece. I That's love the actually. hat. I love that hue of navy blue. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you something. When you painted this piece, mm -hmm. was this from a picture that this person shared with you? Yeah, so this is my sister. So my sister is a like a, a singer, a model, and actress. She um she hosts her own uh, podcasts and videos, and she oh, awesome. um, she hosts this show called uh, Twenty Eight Days and Beyond. Like she does so much. She's just a multi talented uh, human being. And so when I got the opportunity to paint this magazine cover, I was like, I have to paint my sister. She's my best friend anyway. So you know, <laughs> I had to show my sister some love. Beautiful. Well, this is one of my favorite pieces. And before we get too far in, mm -hmm. um, I just want you to tell everyone, I usually do it towards the end of my show, but mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an opportunity to um, plug yourself mm -hmm. and tell everyone how they can find you, book you. Okay. Well, um, if you're looking to get in contact with me, a good place to go is my website. It's uh, AloisMcElwainArt.com. You can um, pretty much find anything you need on the on the website. But my, I think my Facebook page for my art and my Instagram might be even more updated because it's easier. I don't have to do as much, um, you know, actual actual code to just insert things. Um, okay. So my my Facebook page is uh, Facebook.com backslash AloisMcElwainArt, and on Instagram you can find me at Cultures Clothing. Awesome. So tell us about this piece, new mural alert. So, so the really interesting thing about this one is I actually just did this as a really quick thing because um, this wall in itself, we were going to do a whole big mural festival on this wall. And so I came down to check out the wall. And while I was there, I just had pain in my bag. I was like, you know what, I'm here. I'll do a quick piece, even though I know we're going to go over this to white out the whole wall so that we can have this whole big mural festival. We had this thing called uh, the Shark Town Walls uh, Mural Festival that I did with uh, Prism and Color Space Labs uh, here in Philly. And we had, uh, I think, something like 25, 26 artists um, came down and we did this whole big, large mural collaboration wall. So 
this is something that, that I just did when I was coming to check out the wall and I just happened to um, paint a quick thing really quick, even though I knew I was going to be covered uh, later. <laughs> but um, when I see a new wall, I have to paint on it. So that's pretty much what happened. Okay, so you just said you painted this really quick. Mm -hmm. What is really quick to you? How much time um, did it take to do this? That was about three hours. Whoa, that's fast. Mm -hmm. That's quick. That and it was raining. That. How many feet is that wall? How? Uh, the entire wall is uh, pretty tall. Um, I think the entire wall is like uh, 20 something, 22 feet tall. But this particular section is probably about nine or 10. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm like 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, so um, that I, I think that's right around like nine feet at the top of where I finished uh, doing stuff. So you finished where the yellow rim is? Right, right. Because there was um, basically um, the wall was tagged up and the owners, um, the people that own the property wanted to have some murals on the wall um, instead of the tagging. So um, I see the tagging. Mm -hmm, right yeah, here. so we, we just uh, right there. Yeah, we, we just um, did some uh -oh. like a really quick okay. piece on the wall. And then later on, probably like a, a three weeks later, we had the actual festival where we just redid the entire uh, wall. OK, now I saw in there. Some of the captions that you listed included pop art, abstract art, street mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. Now, are those captions that um, depict that particular piece or in general? Well, my, my art is like a mixture of all those things. Like if I was going to give like a, a description of my artwork, it's a mixture of contemporary pop art, comic book art, street art, graffiti. That's it, It's like a whole mixture of all those things. Okay. I'm going to read the caption on this because this is one of the pieces that you told me you wanted to feature. Yeah, I love the that. caption says, he said he didn't understand the process of imagination, but he felt that he was at its mercy. Mm -hmm. Cannabis. That's a line from one of my favorite uh, songs, but it just perfectly describes who I am as a person. It's when I, when I wake up in the morning, the best way I try to describe it to people like my friends asked me, like, how are you able to churn out so much art? Like, because in the last uh, five years, I think I've done 870 pieces of art. Wow. Five years. Like, I, I'm a machine. But the, the reason why it's like that is because, like, my brain, it's like a broken faucet of ideas that are just constantly pull, just pouring out. So I feel like I'm literally just at my imagination's mercy all the time. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay, so I have to ask you the question that I asked the previous artist. Mm -hmm. Do you sleep well and do you sleep long? No, 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 I don't <laughs> sleep well. <laughs> I, my, my brain has a very, very hard time turning off. I have to like take things to help me sleep and to help me stay asleep. Wow. Or else I'll just wake up and I want to paint things. Wow. So what does a typical um, wake up time look like for you? Well, I usually go to bed around 2.33 and I usually huh? wake up around 8 or so sometimes seven um yeah that, that's that's my usual sleep schedule and then i as soon as i wake up i just get right to work as soon as my brain is actually on enough for me to focus on things that's i just get right to work whether i'm doing some digital work on my um my ipad or something else i'm just right to work as soon as i right wake up okay so then you're a vampire like most musicians yeah Accurate you keep them midnight oil hours mm -hmm. lord jesus absolutely what does your family have to say about that? They're pretty much the same. I come <laughs> from a family of musicians, so they, I mean, every, everyone's the same. My sister's always doing all these crazy projects. Um, you know, my, my family is just really, really extremely busy in general. So it's, it's just part of the course, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's the culture, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about this piece. What, who, what is this? Who is she? She, uh, this is actually one of the really interesting thing about this is that um, she was actually just um, one of the few people that I didn't know in person, but I um, found on Pinterest. I just, I was looking for the perfect look for one of the pieces that I was uh, debuting. I think they um, showcased it in um, more contemporary and then uh, went up to the Hamptons for a show. So uh. I was looking for a, a piece that would really pop out. And so I found this uh, woman that I used for reference. And the funny thing is somehow, the person who took the photo and the the model, they saw it. Somebody, I guess someone who knew who they were tagged them in it and they just flipped out. They were like, oh my God, like this is amazing. It was just such a cool thing because like I wanted to be able to like tag the people and like let them know that I painted them. But like sometimes on Pinterest, people don't tag photos. So you right. like you don't know who to 
who to, to credit and stuff. Um, so I was so happy that they, you know, they saw it and then like contacted me and like, Hey, like we, we took this photo and I was like, Oh, that's amazing. Like I wanted to contact you, but I didn't know how to contact, you know? That's wonderful. That's I really love this piece. This is a great piece. It's a favorite what of mine. Kind of, what, what kind of flowers are those in her hair? I, you know what? I don't remember. I don't remember. I yeah. That I was one of the things that struck me about it. I'm usually pretty good with flowers too. I just, I can't, I'm blanking on what it was. And then, you know, the contour that you did with that pink coming down from her neckline to her breast and across mm -hmm. the shoulder. What, what does, was that um, like apparel or did you put that in? Was she so, nude and you added that? No, she had that in the original uh, picture. It was a uh, body paint. I think I changed the color okay. if I'm not mistaken. But um, she she actually had on like uh, some body paint um, with the flowers. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm, maybe I didn't even change the color. She, but I, I do remember she had body paint on. I just can't remember whether it was pink or not. It's beautiful. Thank you. I heard you say that you went to do a show in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. How far have you traveled to feature your art, whether it be in a gallery or a live presentation? How far? I've done well. I've done murals in uh, multiple countries. I have I have six murals in Paris. I have uh, one in London, uh, one in uh, Tokyo, one in uh, Costa Rica, one in Casablanca, and one in Windsor, Ontario. So um, I've I've gotten around a little bit. <laughs> and how did you get to these places? Were you invited? The interesting thing is everything. I feel like everything kind of snowballed. The first one was Paris. So. Um, wow. I sold a painting to one of my friends who lives in Paris and I told her, I was like, it's a dream of mine to um, paint in Paris. And she was like, you know what, give me a couple days. And I was like, oh, okay. So she hit me back in a couple days and she set me up with um, one of the uh, big time international uh, street artists, uh, Christian Gemi. He goes by C215. He's wow. actually um, done a lot of stuff with Banksy. Um, and so uh, she set me up with him. And he found me my first murals in Paris. He literally took my uh, phone from me and was like showing it to people who own property. Can he paint here? Can he paint here? And then he was like, okay, I'm leaving for Rwanda to do a mural. I'll be back in a week to see what you did. And I was like, man, I'm trying to be where you are one day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Rwanda too, that, that wait was, for me. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was back in the day. And so now he's, uh, he's just all over the place. He's an amazing artist. Beautiful. I know, you know, in 2017, I went home to uh, Northern California, where I'm from, to mm -hmm. um, work for the Army Corps of Engineers in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And we were down, um, situated downtown on J Street, which is in, you know, the downtown region, uh, major thoroughfare there for business. And one day I looked out the office window, we're like up on like 22nd floor or something like that. And there were um, hangers, hangers. It was like overnight. When mm -hmm. I went home the night before, they weren't there. But when I came back at some point the next day, there were hangers everywhere. And I could see across the street, there were probably like three or four artists mm -hmm. painting murals mm -hmm. on tall skyscraper buildings. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I actually um, took pictures, of course, <laughs> you know, and shared it, I think, with my, I don't think I was so prominent or interested in Instagram at the time, but I know I shared it on my Facebook. And so one of the things that really, um, you know, stirred me about you were all of these phenomenal murals, because that's one thing. It's one thing to do art and share in a gallery, which is great because mm -hmm. we all love going to galleries. We love going to museums, right? But the street art, street art, oh, there it is. That's my favorite piece, but you are <laughs> blocking it. The street art is something that I really um, am impressed by because anybody can see it. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite anybody. thing about it. That's my favorite yes. thing about it. Now this here, I'm going to just show this briefly right here. Mm -hmm. But this is the piece that's made me know, oh, I have to interview him. Mm -hmm. This is the piece that I inboxed you about and said, can I buy this? Oh, I do remember that. I do remember that, yeah. 
oh, don't worry, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> I have gotten permission and identified the perfect location in my home nice. where I will be hanging that piece. <laughs> As I scroll, I'm trying to find the big one. I actually, when I shared it, I shared it to my Instagram story and I created a highlight called art. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this for a minute. I created my, my art highlight because of you, sir. Oh, and that <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to find it. But let's talk about this. It says, top 10 moments of 2019, debuting my mural and T-shirt design for Champion. Champion, mm -hmm. the label, the brand? Champion, the brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's talk good. about it. Tell us what's up with this. So so basically, I um, I kind of uh, do a lot of work with this collective uh, in Philly here called Tiny Room for Elephants. And Tiny Room for Elephants is a collective that um, just brings artists together and puts them in contact with with different brands and at the uh, at one point in the year usually in the spring we do one big major show where it's the the whole entire tiny room for elephants family and we do the one big like mural showcase which is amazing it's usually like 30 40 different artists like showcasing murals in this big um space in philly um but so so tiny room put me in touch with champion and they wanted um a new design for like a limited edition t-shirt that they were doing and just a, a mural of the same design inside of their uh, Philly store that they were opening up. So are these t-shirts? That was uh, that was me available? on the uh, opening day when the t-shirt debuted. Mm -hmm. I think it was a limited run, and they sold out of every single one of them. I don't know if they're going to uh, do another run of it because I mean it, it would be smart to me because they sold out right away. Like it's it was pretty quick. <laughs> so that's beautiful. Um, hopefully it comes back because I really beautiful. love how you, that. So you, I see you were autographing them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people had me signing signing t-shirts and stuff so that was cool made me feel like a big shot you are a big shot <laughs> this is true i'm still scrolling because i'm going to find that piece i actually saved it but i want to oh this is nice i wanted you know our viewers on youtube who will see this um and i'll share this on facebook as well and some other platforms that i don't advertise on instagram because this work is beautiful Oh, thank Tell you. Tell me about this piece. This one was actually really interesting because um, I was down in Miami for Art Basel and I was actually headed to a gallery show. And, you know, like I wasn't expecting to actually paint it this time. So I was walking down the street and there's this little corner where these guys set up every year and do like art pieces and everything. And so I was walking by, they recognized me from Instagram and asked me if I wanted to hit the wall up. And I was like, you know, I was going to head to this art show, but yeah, let's, let's get down on some art. <laughs> so, so I just went uh, over and kind of just did my thing on the wall. And, you know, it's, it's awesome because, um, you know, there are some like legitimate big shots on the wall, like the, uh, the, the big face right there, that's by Shepard Ferry. And if, for the people that are unfamiliar with Shepard Ferry, he's the guy that designed Obama's hope poster. Whoa. So he, so he had that, um, that big face and stuff over there. So it was cool just to, um, do a piece next to Shepard. And um, I, I got to meet Shepard the last time I was out in Cali too. He's like one of the nicest guys, just a really, really cool guy. He was doing a showcase out there and he was uh, DJing his own art show. So he okay. was, these are really cool dudes, but it was, it was really cool with this thing because uh, multiple artists just came through and just added like a little bit to the wall. Okay. Well, you know what? A gentleman just said to me on here, he can't, my sound isn't working. Hmm. I hope that it's not because I turned off my sound on the stream. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me, sir? I hope that this won't be just you talking. <laughs> I mean, because you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be answering my questions. Exactly. But he couldn't hear me. Hmm. We'll see. If, if it happens that way, then it'll just be you talking. And I, you know what? That'll be fine, too, because this is about you. I'm not tripping. <laughs> I mean, you know, I put my headset, I plugged it in just in case. 
Well, this that's a really interesting piece. I see, you know, the ladder over there. Is that the ladder that you use, or is that a ladder that was painted in the mural? No, no, that that actually is the ladder that I used. It was um an escalating ladder. I actually borrowed it from another street artist who wasn't actually working on this, but he's a good he was good friends with the people doing the area. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is his name is uh, Renda Writer, and Renda is awesome because he literally goes around the world writing messages of world peace and love everywhere. It's mm -hmm. such a just genuinely great guy. I love Renda. Um, we've done a couple collabs. We even randomly met up in London and did a collaboration out there where like I had just landed in London and he posted something like, hey, I'm in London looking for food. Where are the good places? And I'm like, <laughs> where are you? Because I'm in London. <laughs> so, wow. And it's funny because like he lives in Florida and I'm in Philly, but like we're friends and it's just funny that we happen to be in the same country at the same time, you know? Absolutely. Who's this? You know who this kind of looks like? Who? What's the um, model's name? G. Oh my God, what's her name? I want to say Gazelle. Oh, I can see that. I um. What's her name? You know who I'm talking about? Brown skin, high cheekbones. I think I know who you're talking about. Her name starts with a G. Too. Um. I can't remember. This was another one of those Pinterest ones that I just found and I looked the woman's face and I'm like, oh, I like this face. I want to paint it. <laughs> That's the only thing. I wish everything on Pinterest, people actually tag the photographers and the models so I at least know who I'm painting. Because I'll post something and then I'll ask like, hey, does anybody know who this is? You know, to see if you know I can uh, I can tag the people. But um, sometimes cause it's, it's usually like 75% people that I know and then the other 25% um, is like people I don't know. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, I'm going to just say it in case um, to put some emphasis on it. Um, our artist today is saying that he has um, borrowed some art or pictures that he saw on Pinterest. So I'm, I'm going to put this out there. If you share images on Pinterest of, you know, persona, your person or whatever, please tag yourself because you never know when an artist will decide to share it with the world. And get some okay? inspiration from it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's saying, I wish I knew who this was. So did you ever find out who this person was? I don't or think is? I found out who this person is. Like most, most times, like someone will put me onto the person and then I'll tag them um, afterwards and, and let them know. And usually like, they're like, oh my God, someone painting me, which is awesome. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. It's just because Pinterest has so much beauty on it that like I go there oh, yeah. and I'm looking for inspiration. So I just, I just wish like more of the photos actually, and, and a lot of them are, but just some of them that I like, I'm just like, oh, who, I wonder who this is. So I can, you know, check out more of their uh, pictures and see if there are other images that I'd like to paint. Um, and just sometimes you, you never know. Um, right. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say you pull from Pinterest because I have some um, friends who are poets and poetesses, I call them poets. Um, they take art and put to their writings from mm -hmm. Pinterest. So this one is interesting. Oh, that one's interesting. That Tell one me about interesting. it. So basically, I did this in a uh, spot called Hip Hemp Cafe. The guy in the picture is George uh, Monterano. He was the first guy that really got a really large sentence for um, selling uh, marijuana uh, back in back in the day. He did, I think he did like 30, yeah, he did 32 years in prison for selling marijuana. Wow. Uh, and then, uh, and but the, here's the thing that was really interesting. They weren't really giving him that hard time because of the marijuana is because his family was in the mob and they were trying to get him to flip, I think on his father and he wasn't going to do that. And so they gave him a long sentence as like a, um, kind of like a punishment. I punishment. guess. Thing. Um, yeah, they, they said it was a 75 million a year narcotics ring that he was running. Um, and so he, he spends all this time in jail, 32 years in jail and gets out. And now, now he's in a, a climate where this type of stuff is, you know, like you're allowed to have uh, places that sell, you know. Right, isn't that amazing? Now. So now he's he's uh, created this medical marijuana um, franchise. At Hip Hemp Cafe. Yeah, so it's like they CBD. Um, I think they're they're mainly mainly doing CBD here. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but I think he has some other ventures in spots like probably like Colorado that actually where he's doing. Um, medical marijuana, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm not sure. I know most of the stuff he opened up locally is uh, with CBD. 
um, because of the regulations. But I think um, he has some some mar medical marijuana places that he opened up too, if I'm not mistaken. Is this gentleman still alive? Because he looks he aged he here. Is. He's still alive. Really nice guy too. It's really nice. Yeah. How did you meet him, if I might ask? <laughs> someone someone contacted me um, that used to uh, run one of the bars that I frequent. And then he mm -hmm. started uh, running this place. And so he got in contact with me because we were familiar with each other from me just coming and hanging out at the bar all the time. <laughs> wow. wow. So he spent 32 years behind bars, the mm -hmm. longest sentence for a nonviolent first time offender yep. in U.S. history. In U.S. history. Mm -hmm. So he went down in the books. Yes. Yes, indeed. He went down. That's one for the books. Let's see. I'm still trying to get to my favorite. You're clicking on some stuff that has interesting stories, though. <laughs> okay. So, oh, okay. Now, this one here is outside of a, oh, a jazz bar and restaurant. Let's take a peek at this. I just mm -hmm. feel like, you know, when I interview you artists and we go through this on Instagram, YouTube, you know, um, YouTube by way of Instagram, I feel like I'm in a gallery. Yeah. The beauty of it is that the artist is able to, you know, instead of the curator, mm -hmm. um, tell us all about it. So, so what's up with this one? So um, I was contacted by this uh, spot, Chris's Jazz Cafe, that has like a really rich history of like having um, some like world famous jazz musicians come in and perform. So it's like a restaurant, but they have live live jazz um, and they they're still doing um, live, they're doing jazz now, but they're streaming it because, you know, obviously they're not um, opening up the restaurant because of the, the pandemic. So they're doing live jazz now, um, but it's like streaming instead of um, what they used to do. But this place contacted me because I have some uh, friends that work there and they were looking to do some art for their um, anniversary. And they contacted me about um, doing this mural there. And I was all about it because my family has a really rich history with jazz. My grandfather, um, was a jazz saxophonist that played with like Sinatra, Chubby Checker, wow. Sammy Davis, Della Reese, all kinds of people. Like everybody else in my family, they're all musicians. I was the one weirdo who did who did uh, art, but like my uncles were in the Barcays in, in the 70s. What? I um, love the Barcays. Yeah, so my, my two uncles, like my one uncle was the guitar player, my other uncle was a drummer. Um, and so uh, because of that, like Rick James was like my uncle. I didn't know he wasn't what? my real uncle until I was like, until I was like 17, I was like, mom, uh, where is he on the family tree? And she was like, oh, well, he's, he's more like, you know, like your play uncle. And I was like, or, you know, like he, everyone has that, especially black families. We all have right. that, like, those, uncle. those, uh, those uncle. uncles and aunts and stuff that aren't like actually physically related, but that's your family. So that's, that's how, that's how Rick was. Rick was family. Um, but so they, they contacted me to come down and do this piece for uh, their anniversary. And I came and did it. And actually you see the guy that has his hand up. They actually, mm -hmm. um, uh, installed an actual uh, trumpet where his hand is so that people can come and pose with it and act like they're playing. Wow. So let me ask something about the mural. Mm -hmm. When you um, go to um, paint a mural, mm -hmm. this is in public, mm -hmm. the wall that you painted on here, mm -hmm. this establishment owns that wall? Yes. Okay, so do you have to get a permit to paint? No, like from the the city? Time, not in Philly. In certain places, like in Orlando, you have to. And there are certain cities where you have to get permits to, to do this. But um, as long as you have permission of the person that owns the property in Philly, you can uh, do the murals. So you only really run into issues in Philadelphia if you're doing something in a um, historical uh, section of the city because Philly has so much like history. This was the first capital of the U.S. and so there's so much history here. So they right. want to preserve certain things. So in certain cases where you're in a historical district, you have to get some kind of permission first, but otherwise you pretty much just paint. Now this one I love too. I'm starting to notice something as we go through these paintings, especially mm -hmm. of those with the females. Mm -hmm. There is um like this hieroglyphic design that you tend have a tendency, I would say, to put in the background. Am I correct? I'm glad you brought that up. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Talk so, to me. Talk to me. So basically, I am uh, with my those symbols. I'm trying to develop a visual language uh, mm -hmm. that's almost like a like a. I almost have like a Rosetta Stone that I'm building, where each one of these like kind of uh, glyphs have a different meaning. So I call them kudo glyphs. Kudos as in like positive affirmations and glyphs as in, you know, glyphs like, mm -hmm. um, like hieroglyphics. So um, 
I'm actually developing a language so that when people see the different pieces, so they'll be able to read a message out of it. What is this up here? So this reminds this, me of peace, kind of. Yeah, so th this this one doesn't have as much of a, like a really distinct message because like this piece was so small. It's thirteen. Um, I was doing um, I was doing these really small pieces for this uh one gallery on um, that's based out of um France, and they have these really small pieces, so I can only fit so much in here. So uh, the symbol, um, the big symbol with the crown on there is my signature, and so I put a heart in there, like kind of radiating energy. So it's okay. like love, love and energy. Gotcha. Um, so that, that's basically what this piece is saying, but I couldn't fit a whole lot in there because it's so small. Yeah, I was looking at that and I'm like, this means something. Don't forget mm -hmm. to ask him. It's, it reminded me, like I said, of hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm. Hieroglyphics. Now, so here you actually have a live person holding a canvas, looks mm -hmm. like. What is this all about? Oh, that's Blake. That was uh, th uh, that was for her birthday. That was just my friend, and uh, she moved into a new place, and um, I had to to give her something for a new place. That's all. <laughs> it was a birthday so present. So, what size is that that she's holding? I think that is uh, it's either like twenty four by twenty four, thirty by thirty. That's small. Yeah, it's not a it's not a huge piece. I usually um I usually paint really really big pieces, but sometimes um. I don't know how much space people have. So if I'm giving someone something as a present, I'll probably give them something a little smaller just because I don't know if they have a huge wall space for some of these big pieces that I do. I want a big one. <laughs> if I can afford to have it shipped, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm pulling up these old spray paint cans. Oh, yeah, these things. So, you know, I was looking for a way to recycle because so, I have, I use so many cans. Mm -hmm. And so I was using, I was looking for a way to have another use for the cans instead of having these cans and just like throwing or throwing away. Doing, doing away with them. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to spray these cans over and do some art on there so I can have like some affordable pieces for some people that can't afford like some of the bit really big things that I do. Um, people can have something if they just want to support or have something that I did in, in um, their collection, they can get one of these cans. That's what I was doing, just trying to make really affordable uh, products. So how much do those sell for, might I ask? Oh, those are uh, 45. $45. $45 for one of those painted spray cans. Mm -hmm. How well do they sell? Oh, they, when I when I uh, promote them and tell people that I have them, they sell really well. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, if I go to your website, are there featured items on there that one can purchase? There are. I need to I need to update the website because one of the problems is that I paint so frequently that I always have to catch up on my site. Like a lot of times, like I'll go on my website and do these like giant photo dumps where I'm like, OK, I haven't uh, updated my site in a month now. Here are 200 new paintings. <laughs> you know, so. Wow. <laughs> so then I have to try to play catch up and like figure out what's going on in the shopping cart and what I'm just displaying. So I have to, okay. just to catch up sometimes. So like this piece of Biggie, this is mm -hmm. Biggie Smalls. Yes, indeed. Now, when you painted this, is that's a canvas, right? Mm -hmm. How many of those did you paint, or how many do you have available? So I that was uh, that was an original piece. So um, I made I have prints available of it, um, mm, but there I, we I, go. So I made this as a commission for someone. Oh. It's a thirty-six by forty-eight uh, size piece. It was commissioned for someone, and yeah. so then I just I made the prints for it afterwards. You know, but okay. So that's the size that I want. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, it's a big size. That's the one I want. I'm glad I found one. So I can, you know, you said it's 36 by 48? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm trying to find her. I'm going to find her. You painted her a long time ago. Oh, yeah, I wish I knew which one it was because I can, I probably know exactly. It's that green it. one. The green one, the teal green. And she has her finger like this. Oh, that actually is, is further up. It's not down here. No, you, no, you no, had no. a big one. I showed the one with you standing next to it, yeah. but you had one where you just featured it by itself. Yeah, so that, that should be further up. And the reason I know that's further up is because I did it like it was one of the first uh, things that I did during the pandemic. And that's that's why I know it's further up because that, that was definitely in 2020. Okay. Um, I did that. Um, well, you got a whole lot of followers on Instagram. You got 12.7 thousand. 
Yeah, it's 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 growing. It's it's so hard because Instagram has a, a follow like limit, so I can only really? follow top uh, seventy five hundred people back. And right. so I built up a lot of my following because like people would follow me, and I'd follow, I'm like, oh, you want to be my friend? I'm your friend. So we're friends right. now. So. But then I realized, like, when I got to a certain point, it was like, oh, there's a follow limit. I can't follow. I have to, like, unfollow people that haven't posted in, like, right. nine months to be able to follow new people now, which I think um, Instagram needs to, to fix that to be more like Twitter, where, like, it's just your ratio right. um, is, is the, that shows, like, go. how many people you're able to follow. I found her. See, she's in my arc highlight. I'm going to mm -hmm. see if I can make it stop when I bring it up. If I can bring it up, if it will let me. See her? There she is. Her. It's not going to let me open it on the laptop. Uh, the nerd. Open. But her, it's her. She is the one I want. I love this. I absolutely love this. I'm oh, it's trying familiar. to open. There she goes. Where is she? Ah! Don't move. Be still. There she How is. How do I stop her? This is my favorite piece. What is this? What does it represent? Well, you know, I I wanted to do uh, just an image that was like a closer up, just like a straight crop of the face, because I usually don't do a lot of pieces. Like usually you can see some of the body in the pieces that I do, but um, that, there was just something I wanted to play with because I was looking for, it was the pandemic and mm -hmm. I was looking for things to paint. And so I... Um, I found just random pieces of wood in the garage. And so ah. I was like, okay, this is a smaller piece of wood. And to be able to control spray paint on smaller um, things, like I was like, you know what, if I enlarge the face and do like a closer crop of the face, maybe it'll make it easier for me to get some of those really tight details in there. So okay. I did a clean crop on the face and I experimented with some color and some shading. And that's, that's how it came about. Oh, I love it. When I saw that piece, I just fell in love with it. that that teal green hue mm -hmm. is just so brilliant. And then the fuchsia that you put, you know, for her lip gloss or stick or whatever. I mm -hmm. was like, oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Thank you. Well, you know, we've been sitting up here talking. I mean, you have such a wonderful and um, vast inventory and, you know, so much that I'm just in awe of. But, you know, it's almost been an hour. Mm hmm. Just about. How long, let's say, if I ordered your piece today, mm -hmm. so like that canvas I like and that I wanted a 38 by 48, mm -hmm. how would you send me that? How does that work? How do I order? How does it ship? All that. It's so, so when you're doing bigger pieces, it's always, always a pain in the butt because the, um, the companies like FedEx and stuff, they really charge you up for like larger uh -huh. items. So they, and they never have boxes like available to actually pack these uh -huh. larger things in. So I always have to like cut a box <laughs> right. and, then, and then get charged up when I put it in the mail. It's, it's so bad. Like it's, they, they need to come up with some kind of like more affordable system for mailing out art because it's, it's always pricey. Always. Okay. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Now that you've answered my fun question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible then to get that piece in a print that size, thirty eight yeah, by forty eight? Absolutely. I mean, it it wouldn't it wouldn't be. I don't think it would be thirty six by forty eight because um, that's a rectangle and that piece is more square. Mm -hmm. But it could be like thirty six by thirty six. Yeah, I want a big one. I want yeah. a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm do gonna that. hang it. I have a wall for it. Mm -hmm. That's and one. I, mean, of I just have to frame. It. Mm hmm. That's one of those pieces that I have to take to like a like a custom uh, place that does like the oversized prints. I know um, just a place that I use um, pretty frequently. So I would just take it to them, have them get everything all printed up. But so yeah, you send it to me in a tube. I could send it in a tube or it could it could already be on the on the frame. If I send it to you in a tube, it's what like way cheaper. <laughs> yeah, that's why if, if I, I said tube. tube. Yeah, if I send it to you in a tube and you like you get it framed like at, at your um at your your own time, like it, it's one of those things. It's like exponentially cheaper. That uh huh. Exponentially I want the print. Okay. okay, so <laughs> just so viewers have an idea of what something like that might cost, I asked my last um, guest as well. How much mm -hmm. might that cost me? The print. I have to, I have to um, see what it would cost at that size. 
Okay. Um, that's that's something that that's one of those things where uh, like I always have to like contact the the company that does it and say like hey like I'm looking to get a print this size what what's it going to run me so okay. like as soon as I contact them I'll be able to tell you. Excellent, excellent. Well, I will be. I want you to go ahead and do that. And mm -hmm. when we get off of here, as I edit this YouTube, um, I will be sending you an inbox message to say I would like this print. Okay. And you said thirty six by forty eight. Yeah, so so for that, because it's square, it would have to be either 36 by 36 or 48 by 48. So 48 by four. Okay, I'll do, let me do a measurement, but I'm going to get that piece. Okay. I want that piece. Okay. <laughs> I have to have that piece. It just spoke to me. It spoke to me. I saw her in my sleep. <laughs> I don't know what it was. That's awesome. The, the hues, the hues. Oh, I love hues. that piece. And then I have to say, I have a room in my home that is that color. Mm. So the decorum, perfect. the decorum. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect fit. And she might actually be up on the ceiling. Oh, cool. <laughs> Isn't that different? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you, sir. Um, you are such a blessing around oh, the globe. Perfect. You're very well traveled. And we we want to get the book. When will the book come out? At the end of um, April, you yeah, said? It'll, it'll be like so sometime in between the 28th and like May 4th or 5th. It'll be out like in that time frame. I'll, I'll be posting okay. about it. So people, you will definitely see me posting about it. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Well, if you guys haven't already followed um, Alois on Instagram, do that. Follow him on Instagram. He indicated his Facebook, Alois um, McElwain. Did mm -hmm. I say it right? Yeah, Lois McElwain Art is my uh, Facebook. Okay. And he has um, an art.com, a Lois McElwain art.com website. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and follow him so that you can stay abreast of what he's doing, purchase his beautiful art, and book him. Book him to do a mural. Book him to do a book signing because his book will be available at the end of next month going into May. Mm -hmm. And just spread the word. You know, the arts are important. I am a clinical mental health therapist and, you know, art therapy is now an approved form of therapy. Many people draw for coping um, strategy as a coping strategy, a coping skill, but mm -hmm. it now is an approved therapeutic intervention. Absolutely. So, you know, we want to just, you know, it used to be art in the school, the schools have changed, the funding's not there, but whoever you are, whatever business, corporation, church, entity, you know, family, fellowship, mm -hmm. sorority, fraternity. Let's, you know, um, let's let's sponsor the arts. And let's sponsor, we see a lot of these pain and sips. I'm looking forward to doing one of the Houston areas soon, but let's get these um, artists and their work out there. Do you ever do anything like that? A pain okay. and sip? Well, not necessarily a paint and sit, but I, I paint live at events all the time, like all the time. Like when oh, things do are you? Yeah, I, paint, I do live paintings. Like usually when things are like normal, I'll, I'll probably do at least like one live painting every like two weeks or so. But I, I do them really frequently. I, I'm i I'm good at doing like live stuff because I a lot of the stuff I do, I freestyle off the top of my head so I can think quickly. So when you do a live painting, is this someone just shows up and says paint me? It depends on what it is. Like sometimes they want abstract. Sometimes they just let me do whatever I want to. So it okay. just depends on what the event is. Beautiful. So you heard that, you guys. If you need him, you know, you want to book him for a live painting event, he can do that also. But we're not going to take up any more of his time because he probably has 800 ideas that have run through his mind while we were talking here. Always. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to salute you and thank you for your um, willingness, you know, immediate willingness to appear on my Unfiltered with Car Jones Unlimited LLC podcast. And we look forward to working with you. I do plan to get to Philadelphia and I do plan to book you. Oh, awesome. That sounds good. And it's my pleasure. I had fun. Excellent. Excellent. So I will um, go back and hopefully the sound will be there mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll get it edited and we'll put it out there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, thanks to everyone who participated, who will view and listen. I'll post it on all of my Car Jones Unlimited platforms, and we're signing off.